Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my low buy update for the month of March. Now I am filming this on my vlogging camera so I hope that the sound and also the visual quality of it is okay. Uh, I just felt like a more relaxed setup today. As with the previous updates, I am going to split this video up. So first of all, I'm going to chat about how I spent my budget and what I purchased this month. Then I kind of want to talk about any challenges that I had throughout the month uh, and potentially anything that might have been sort of catching my eye. Then I want to talk about things that have been giving me joy. And then finally, I want to talk a little bit about shopping pre-loved because I like sort of having a little bit of a conversational piece in this video as well for those of you who are interested. So I think the biggest surprise this month is going to be the fact that I actually didn't buy anything. I didn't spend any of my budget this month. I, you know, as February ended, I thought I had a very, very clear vision on how I was going to spend my March budget. When I purchased those really lovely nylon trousers from Camilla and Mark, I actually tried on a trench coat while I was there as well. Same nylon fabric. It has this really light quality to it. And it wasn't really until maybe sort of January time that I had started to think I'd like to add a navy trench to my wardrobe this year. And it was very much by chance that I came across that one at Camilla and Mark. Um, however, when I was in there, it was well, one, I'd already bought the Scanlon trousers, uh, but two, it would also have put me over my budget for the month anyway. So I chose, you know, to just wait and see. And I have to say, it's not very often that I get this very frenzied impulse to buy something, but that was how this jacket made me feel. So I was very certain I was going to go in and I was going to buy that trench. But I ended up thinking, you know, it'd probably be better for me to sit on this purchase. Uh, I'm sure there are other kind of navy trench coats out there that might also fit the bill that might be better in some way or another that might actually be less expensive. Despite the fact that this one from Camilla and Mark really ticked all the boxes of what I was looking for from both the design perspective to the way that it draped and hung on the body and I really like the way that it looked done up as well as being worn open and because it's so light very easy to pack away into a bag. I have been looking at another one from a Korean brand called Nil BP. I have had stuff from this brand before and been really happy with it so right now I'm kind of just sitting on the purchase just considering what I'm going to do so who really knows uh, but that was kind of one of the ways that I thought I was going to spend my budget this month and I didn't <laughs> and I'm kind of I, I feel good about the fact that I've been really considered about how I'm going to make that purchase uh, the other thing that I considered buying was a raincoat you know we had unprecedented amounts of rain in uh, New South Wales and Queensland um, at the end of February and it's continued to rain on and off throughout March so it sort of felt to me like that was another gap that was in my wardrobe which I've never really even considered fulfilling. <laughs> I've always gone I'll just wear a um, regular trench that is water repellent and an umbrella. However I know from a practicality standpoint and this is something that I'm really honing in on with my purchases now I'm trying to be very pragmatic is that a hooded raincoat is really something that would come in handy and it would be something I would be able to utilize for years and years, especially keeping in mind that the Bureau of Meteorology has said that we are likely to have a lot more rain this year throughout autumn and also into winter. So I know I'd be reaching for it a lot. There are a few that I have been looking at. So originally the first one I saw was from Karen Walker and I really like um, Karen Walker is a brand as you all know. I like the hood. However, I wasn't sure if it's too short I don't know if anyone has tried it on but if you have can you please let me know what you think in the comments um, Then I was talking to one of my girlfriends and she has the reins uh, Rain jacket with the hood. So I really liked hers on her But I'm not sure exactly which style she has so I might have to ask her So. That's another option. And then I was on the J Crew website. I just thought I'd have a little bit of a browse because why not? And I saw that they also had a really nice double-breasted style raincoat. So, uh, and that one also looked like it was kind of more knee length too, which is a good length. So 
I'm really not sure <laughs> where I'm going to go from a raincoat perspective, but if there are any other brands, I think is it Stritterheim um, is also another brand that I think has come up. Uh, maybe I've gotten that wrong, but any recommendations that you have, please let me know. Open to considering any options, and I, it might even be that I purchase a few and try them out and then decide ultimately which one is going to be best for me. Uh, but I think I'd like one in either a black or a nice neutral color. So those were kind of the two things that were really top of my radar to purchase in March and just didn't really end up happening. And I'm okay with that. Clearly I had very set intentions about what I wanted to buy this month. Um, it was more just not going out to the shops. Uh, and I think really for me, um, it was because my mind was elsewhere. I wasn't really that focused on it, on buying anything. Um, I have to admit, I've, I've really suffered with quite dreadful anxiety throughout the month of March. Uh, I don't know if I've ever really talked about this before, but it is something that I have kind of dealt with a lot over the years. Um, and right now I am talking to a therapist to try and help manage it in an unmedicated way. But waking up at night every 15 minutes having a panic attack, it's not very nice um, and uh, I've really been trying to focus on my mental well-being over all else and so that actually might be one of the reasons why I've also been a bit more quiet on social media and I don't know about you but I do tend to find that the more social media I consume the more I almost feel triggered to shop or at least feel that impulse and desire to shop creep in. Uh, so I think maybe I should talk about some of the things that I have been doing that have really been giving me joy in the month of March. And the first thing I would say has been my newest book, which is Pachinko. I think I mentioned that I was going to be reading that one next in February. I haven't finished it yet, but I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Um, other things that I've been doing have been, I think, probably just focusing a little bit more on our home renovation. We are still waiting for our DA approval to come through. I'm really hoping it's going to be soon so we can get our build date uh, because it just feels like it's been really drawn out. I, I can't remember when I first spoke about uh, our reno, but it's been a really, really long time coming. So I'm going to be just over the moon when work begins and then when it's done, it's going to transform our home and Finally, I would say turn it into the style that is reflective of my husband and my sort of, I guess, personal aesthetic tastes. Uh, but what I have been doing is kind of keeping an eye out on the furniture pieces that we want to get. So we have settled on the couch that we want to get for downstairs. I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but when we first moved into this house, we purchased a couch from Castlery. Unfortunately, from a wear and tear perspective, it's just not worn very well. I don't know if it's a specific sofa that we bought. However, it has meant that we have had to seek out an alternative. Some of the the springs in it have actually worn out and that happened after 12 months. The fabric is pulled and you know, I'm the type of person who does tend to take as much care as I possibly can. Uh, and it's it looks very, very tired. Um, so we've found a replacement and at least while our son is still young and getting grubby hands on everything, we're gonna put throws on it to help protect that. So um, that's kind of the first thing. Uh, we also have found a sofa that we like for upstairs, which is from Adairs. And it's one of those, we can make it into an L shape as well. So it'd be nice and cozy. Um, other things I've been looking at have been artwork as well. Uh, I don't know if I've talked about this before, but we don't really have anything on the walls, mostly because we were waiting for our renovation plans to come to fruition. Um, and I did purchase a piece of art, I think it was in December, um, from, oh god, what's his name? He's an Australian artist, his name is, um, it's Kane Lena Lehanna. I'm going to link his Instagram below. He does these really beautiful uh, floral um, floral paintings. So I purchased one of those at the end of last year, which I've already got a spot where we're going to hang it, and I'm looking forward to doing that. But I also really would like to uh, essentially find a new piece of artwork to hang in our son's room when his room moves upstairs. So at the moment, he's got a commissioned piece from 
Ben Tankard, which is 1984. And if you've got the same sense of humor as my husband and I, then you might get the joke. <laughs> but I kind of wanted to actually move that out and put it into our living room, potentially above where our piano will go when we get a piano, which that's a whole other thing. I'm so excited. Um, I played the piano for 10 years for anyone who uh, doesn't know that. Um, so I found an artist I really like, but unfortunately his works are a bit too expensive. Uh, I'm going to butcher the name, but I will put some pictures on screen. They're very sort of, uh, I, I would say a little bit more astrological, a bit more centered around the zodiac, uh, but really nice, fun, vibrant colors, a lot of dark blues. I thought something like that would be really beautiful in his room, uh, but a bit out of my budget. So trying to see if I can locate something similar. That's sort of something I've been focusing on uh, and, you know, hopefully would like to invest in a little bit more. Uh, and that I've really been enjoying as well as sourcing some vintage furniture, which um, I just bought um, a new desk for my husband because the one that he's got is falling to pieces. And we were looking at chairs and what we would like to get for both of us actually are the Herman Miller Eames, the uh, soft pad chair. It's kind of the, I think I've seen it called an executive chair, really nice classic uh, office chair design. And I found one on Cherish, which was so affordable. It looked so cozy and lived in and comfortable. And I'm regretting not buying it because when I just checked last week, it had sold. So uh, yeah, I've been doing that. I mean, these are obviously things that are a little bit more expensive that we're going to consider over time. But I think I'm just finding a lot more joy in looking for stuff that's going to be surrounding us every day in our space where we spend a lot of our time because uh, my husband and I both work from home quite a lot. And I think the other thing that has sort of given me joy this month has been indulging in self-care a little bit more. So as I said, I've, I've been feeling really anxious. And one of the things that the therapist that I've been seeing suggested was to indulge in myself. So to do things that are just for me, whether it is going for a walk or just finding those little pockets of time where I can do something special and meaningful for myself to switch off and calm down. So I really, really like the, uh, I think it's called the Body Tonic from Clarins. Uh, it's this beautiful massage oil, has aromatherapy sort of fragrances to it. So before I wash my hair, which I quite often like to do at night time, I find it ends up being a bit smoother, um, which actually I think the shampoo and conditioner combo from Chloran that I'm using also has had a lot to do with that. But um, when I, when it's a hair wash night, I like to give myself an extra 10 minutes. I will massage the oil into my skin and then have a really nice sort of, I would say kind of cool to medium, medium warm shower to rinse off the oils. And it just smells so nice. It feels really uplifting and calming and soothing. And uh, it's just a nice little ritual to do um, every time I'm washing my hair. So I've been enjoying that too. Now, I wanted to finally end a little bit on uh, shopping pre-loved because this is obviously something that I want to ensure that I am doing a lot more uh, and actually something, I mean, I've been shopping pre-loved since I was 14, I think, or 13, 14, uh, basically two decades, really long time. Uh, I've talked in the past about how, um, for me, it's always been a really great way to be able to stretch my budget a little bit further, to be able to buy quality that was out of my price range even at a young age. And it's something that I will always suggest as an option when you are adding anything to your wardrobe, especially if you are on the hunt for something that will last you years. Um, now, one of the, I would say one of the precursors to me wanting to do a low buy was actually the quantity that I was buying pre-loved. Um, and I'm sure if you are someone who thrifts a lot, you may have come into this or come across this yourself where you find that the prices are so incredible. Uh, the deals are just too amazing to pass up that you end up purchasing more than you need or buying things and justifying the purchase of items because of the price and the fact that it's not really kind of making a dent in your budget. Uh, especially I think in America where you can go to a thrift store and you can buy a sweater for five dollars or less from some of the videos I've seen that are cashmere or that are wool or cotton. Uh, 
really the incentive to uh, want to limit yourself is not there because you are just being spoiled by what is available um, and I think if you're trying to be really conscious about what you add into your wardrobe it can be something that is again like a little bit of a, um, a trigger it can be a slippery slope if you are not careful and are not managing it and that was what I found myself doing at the end of 2021 uh, I'm not really sure what it was that kind of drove that behavior but I was on the real real constantly and I would place orders and I found you know I could purchase seven eight nine items and spend $400 and they would be brands like Jill Sander, Philip Lim, Tibby, Saint Laurent. Like I have got so many incredible items that I purchased at the end of last year which I didn't really need to buy but I love them. They might have been archival pieces which I've had my eye on for a really long time and I've talked about this whole thing about collecting and this is one of the reasons why I've actually, or a few years ago, I stopped looking at runway collections because I found that it really drove me to desire more because I would make wish lists and I love so many designs. I'm, I'm really like fiercely quite passionate about fashion uh, and I really enjoy, you know, the art of it and the, the art of putting together a garment and I, I mean I love watching those videos where it's couture and it's very intricate and detailed or even just how handbags are made. I, I find that entire process very fascinating, especially as someone who grew up with a uh, yaya who was a seamstress. She worked as a seamstress. She made all of my clothes as a kid and I got to pick out the fabrics and everything and pick out the patterns for what she made and I had a little plastic sewing machine and I would try and make dolls clothes alongside her as she was making me clothes so you know having that sort of a background um, I find that there's a lot of temptation there for me essentially uh, so yeah I've got all this really really beautiful clothing which I've barely worn and I don't even know that I've shared much of it or anything online because I'm, I'm, I haven't shared all of the outfits that I've worn every single day uh, so I don't know if you want to see a video where I talk through some of the pre-loved things that I bought last year and maybe I can find some alternatives and why I bought them and how I would style them but do let me know <laughs> but yeah I just found it was a really slippery slope and I was buying way more than I needed and and the justification behind it was a, the price, but also, oh gosh, I've been wanting this since five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years ago, and now I've finally found it. I've finally come across it, and it's only 35 US dollars because it is such old season. That is a steal, it is a bargain. I would be stupid not to buy it. And that's definitely something you can get caught up in very, very easily, and um, it can really cause you to shop in excess. And uh, I think in some ways approach shopping pre-loved or secondhand in the same way that some people might shop from fast fashion. And that's really something I want to avoid, something I want to steer clear of. Um, I am mindful that I, I definitely add more to my closet than the average person, but it's because I, you know, share videos on YouTube and I want to ensure that what I'm sharing in some regards is current. <laughs> you know, I, I know how frustrating it can be when someone shares an item and it's you know, two, three, four years old and you can't get your hands on it and you want to get that look. Uh, so I, I totally understand and it's something that I battle with internally a lot. So uh, I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are on this and if you are someone who does do a lot of pre-love shopping or you do thrifting or um, yeah, you're quite involved in the secondhand economy, I'd love to know how you feel about that and how you manage uh, the creep of potentially buying more and more than you need. So. Yeah, that is kind of, I suppose, what I wanted to end on. I did get a comment in my last low buy update saying that you'd love to see a wish list video. So I am going to share that. It's going to be coming very, very soon where I talk through what I'm currently looking at, what items I'd like to add to my wardrobe this year, what brands I would like to potentially shop from this year, and maybe some more vague pieces. But yeah, just more like a snapshot at what I am loving right now. Uh, but yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this little update. Uh, I still find it so bizarre that I didn't buy anything in March considering what I am typically like when it comes to shopping. And I sort of wonder whether it is more this excitement around our upcoming renovation that is really steering me away from the shops, at least from clothing, because I, I have everything I need uh, to think about other things that 
will be a much bigger presence in our home. But that is it from me today. Thank you so much for tuning in, watching me ramble on and on for ages about my low buy. I would love to know if you are also doing a low buy or a no buy and how it has been going. I know a few of you have been sharing your experiences with me uh, and a lot of your personal experiences and I am always so grateful for that. So please do uh, keep up the conversation as it really lights up my day to receive those messages. If you are new here and you want to see more of my low buy updates, then please do subscribe. Don't forget to hit the like button if you did enjoy it. And I guess the other thing I'd love to know is, do you have any particular videos that you want to see me film in the next couple of months as I complete the second half of my low buy challenge? So yeah, please, please also let me know down in the comment section. But yeah, thanks for watching. I'm going to sign off here and I will see you next week with a brand new video. See you soon. Bye.